Why South Sudan? An Every Village podcast where we answer questions about the world's youngest nation. The question of the day is, what are some things the South Sudanese have taught you? Hello everyone, my name is Tiana Johnston and I am the host of this podcast called Why South Sudan? So we are doing something a little fun today. We do have Andrew Brown here. Hey, hey. And surprise, surprise, we have... Blake Jones. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> yes, we have Blake Jones. He was on a few um, few episodes back, and so we had so much fun. We said, you know what? Let's all jump on it together. This is going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, our first time. This is great. Since we've all been to South Sudan and we love it so much, um, I thought it'd be fun that we could just talk back and forth, kind of popcorn style of what um, what are some things that the South Sudanese have taught you. So, Blake, can you take it away? Yeah, thanks for letting me go first. It makes it easy. <laughs> <laughs> I think the number one thing the South Sudanese have taught me is resiliency. And we've talked about it, I'm sure, on the podcast, just like the craziness of their recent history of their nation and the this years and years of war and growing up in that way um, it it demands resiliency if you're going to grow up that way and in that environment. And I know that you guys have seen that as well. Um, but it's it's a tremendous thing to witness and how, so you know, you can say resiliency and strength and like how strong of a people they are and how resilient of a people that they are um, is what makes them in, get an incredibly, be the, make them be incredible sharers of the gospel going to the far reaches of the earth. You know, they live in, the far reaches of the earth and so they are so ready to go when the time comes so yeah no that's amazing i'm glad you stopped there because i was worried you were going to start to take all of ours but no i mean (laughs) those are those it's so true man so resilient um because they've they've had to be they've experienced so much the one that's related to that that they've taught me is boldness Mm -hmm. i love this one because you know like it's pretty much like you know I don't know, in the United States, we have people that are bold and we have people that are timid, you mm-hmm. know, and public speaking is one of those very common examples of people that are really comfortable public speakers and people that are terrified. Mm-hmm. In fact, I think fear of public speaking is one of the most common fears, right, Certainly. in our society. Yeah, it is. And um, in South Sudan, I don't know, I have not met a South Sudanese that's afraid of public speaking. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And what's funnier to me is it's not just that they're like confident public speakers. They don't care whether they have anything of worth to say. They just get up and talk. (laughs) And so like in in front of a crowd of hundreds, you know, we have these pastor conferences and people get up and they don't know what they're saying. And they'll even say that. They're like, you know, I don't have very much to say. And then they'll just go and just start talking because Mm -hmm. they feel like there's this like expectation for them to talk. But I love it, too, because there's just when they do talk, they talk with strength. They talk with boldness. Mm -hmm. Like they're very direct and confrontational. Um, but there's a lot we can learn from that too. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and when it comes to sharing the gospel, right? Yeah. Like, man, they're not at all, like there's not even a remote part of their head in the background that, that they're afraid of sharing their faith of the implications mm-hmm. of that. Whereas in the United States, we worry about what other people think about us and all that. They don't have that fear, you yeah. know, and so much we can learn from them on that. Yeah. I think so like if you have a company and you need some door to door salesmen, <laughs> uh, and you need some cold callers, like. Pick up the phone and call South Sudan. Like, yeah. Get on the horn yeah. and we'll get you set we should up. Set, you know what? We should set up a service center in, yeah. in South Sudan. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> Just, yeah. 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 I think I would throw in hospitality because mm-hmm. yep. my goodness. And I know, I mean, it is, it's culturally something that is just so normal, but it's the fact that, I mean, you can just show up at your neighbor literally can just walk to your house and you're going to feed them. You're going to give them water. And here in America, I mean, I just, as sad it is to say, I've got to put it in my schedule. You know, I don't really, one, I don't really have anybody that just pops over anytime. I know Blakey used to be known for that. Yeah, I like to pop over. (laughs) He would uh, to his friend's house, which is great. But here in America, that's just not part of our culture. And I think it just really reflects the kingdom and just just such a generous heart. Mm, that's a really good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You you popped over at my house before. Yeah. I like a good pop over, but I do it less and less yeah. these days. But because you're right, like I have a kid now mm-hmm. and I'm married now and it's yeah. you know, getting, you know, when I was single is easy and I lived in an apartment complex with a lot of friends and we just pop over easy. But as your life gets busier, I think that's a lot of why in America we don't do that. Right. Mm-hmm. We just 
I got to get two people on, you know, in the car and do for a pop, do a pop in. What if they're busy? The South Sudanese, they don't think like that. And I, and I love that. Mm-hmm. And it, it and well, yeah, I'll share too. Like it's, it's amazing. Like in, in our, one of our, in our Tonge location, one of my favorite things to do is my favorite times of the day is in the evening, either right before dinner mm-hmm. or right after, depending on if it's light or what time we're going to eat is walking through the villages, mm-hmm. walking through like the back paths behind our compounds or across the street road from our compounds. And it's, it's amazing. Like you're just saying hi a hundred times and you greet people and then they get to know you. And we stop by Peter Marielle's house or, mm-hmm. or uh, one of our staff members works along the road there too. And it's just, a, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. Hey, can I take us down a notch? Cause yes. Yes. here's something that's fascinating. So obviously we're talking about really great attributes that they've taught us. They've also taught some really fun things you'd never think you'd learn. I think I know what you're going to say. Well, one is, so the the typical, (laughs) how do I, how do I bring it up? The typical way, and obviously in South Sudan, they don't have toilet paper, right? And so, of course, they have learned other ingenious ways to to, to cleanse after Mm -hmm. uh, you use the facilities, right? Mm -hmm. And so the common way there, you know, we might think leaves, but strangely, and I I have used leaves in South Sudan, and there's some glorious ones. Um, I could yes. direct people to the right ones, but they also uh, commonly they use sticks and um, and there's you know certain ways. So anyway, those are the types of things you get to learn too when you're um, you know going into a new environment. You can learn a lot of things. So I love that. Um, anyway, so uh, wait, that one I don't know. Really? I might I'll ask y'all for details after. Well, <laughs> yeah, the methodology <laughs> we can discuss um, offline, but it's it is a very effective way. Yeah. Of Wow. Taking, as, pick, as they call it, a long call, right. which but I like pick, well. pick the right stick. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of thorny sticks out there that would <laughs> not be good. <laughs> yeah, and, and speaking of, they, they taught us fun words for number one and number two, short call mm-hmm. or a long call. That's mm-hmm. right. And I like that a it lot, is. too. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a really classy way it's to put it. It's a very classy way of saying it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Speaking of sticks, they also use sticks to brush their teeth, yes. right? Different sticks. Yeah, Make sure we clarify. <laughs> very different sticks. Yeah. But they're really effective, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not very easy, though, right? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, with the neem tree, I mean, what's so amazing is that it has antibacterial properties mm-hmm. in it, which is so cool that God even created that. But, I mean, yeah, they just use the end and they chew it and then they, like, rub it against their teeth because it gets all the plaque and tartar off. Um, I mean, the majority of the Sassanese have incredible teeth. Yeah, that's yeah. true. We actually were talking about if that. They don't, if they don't pull them out uh, <laughs> in right. their teenage years, they do remain a bit pretty nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. What, Tiana, what, is, um, what have you learned living there from the women that you think is unique? Mm-hmm. Um, I think definitely, I mean, maybe I would say resiliency for sure. Um, just their, they don't grumble. They don't complain about being a mom. They don't complain about house chores um they do maybe complain about their husbands but <laughs> hey that's <laughs> that, universal that's transcultural <laughs> for good but, reason but even if they're sick they're still gonna get up and do because that's just the way of life there you know yeah. so i think just resiliency but even just the lack of grumbling and just maybe in maybe in like unintentional or no i would even say gratitude because Something I loved when we would meet with our staff and do devotions in the morning, you know, we first would start off with, what do we want to praise God for? And so many people would just be like, I'm so thankful I woke up and I wasn't sick today. And it's like, it, there's just such a genuine praise and genuine genuine thankfulness to the Lord. Mm, that's yeah. a good one. And, you know, man, I, I, this one, I, I have to say this one, it's generosity. Man, they have taught me so much about generosity. Mm-hmm. Truly, like my eyes have just been opened over the years by a people that, just don't in in human terms don't have a lot yeah and they just give and give and give and they're like and i, I just want to shout out to daniel lawall our country director amazing friend amazing man of god just incredible he's taught me so much over the years i mean just like just uh, so many ways but one thing about daniel he's got such a tender heart um it really hurts when other people hurt when he sees someone mm-hmm. hurting right but, you know, it is, it's just wild. But, like, it, he'll go out, you know, on these evening walks, for instance, you know, like you talk about Blake, and um, and somebody will come up to him and, you know, they need money. They need they need help for one reason or other. And he doesn't even ask a question. He just he, – he puts his hand in his pocket and he pulls out what he has and he gives and he gives freely. And it's not always easy. I know that. I mean, mm-hmm. I know he wrestles with that. But he's also willing to do it. 
Mm-hmm. And and that's not unusual. It's the South, like if they have something to help with somebody in need, they're going to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like the the thought of that, we have to weigh it out and think through longer Im- implications and our retirement and this and that and and all this. It, so true. You know, it's just that's not the way they think. They just keep it so simple. Mm-hmm. And I love that. It's like sometimes, you know, we just overcomplicate our our walk with God here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that leads me to another thing is they've taught me a lot about like real faith. Mm-hmm. And I think part of that is is a a benefit of the society that they live in where they are not a post-Christian nation. They're kind of, I mean, they've had Christianity exposed to them over many years, but even before it was Christianity, they were exposed to the spiritual world for for millennia. And of course we want to see that change, you know, the old the old customs, the old African traditional religions. But the sort of the legacy of that is they really like when they hear about Jesus, like they are, there's no doubt about it. Now they still have, may have some cultural things. They're still, they're working through to get out of the, as we talked about this morning in devotion, some of the cultural elements that don't line up with scripture. But when they hear about Jesus, like they have a faith in Jesus. And that's something that I personally struggle with. Like mm-hmm. I'm just a wrestle with it. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to live my life like I believe it, but I still wrestle with it intellectually sometimes. And you don't see that mm-hmm. across the country almost at all. And I think that's also really powerful. And when you compare that or pair that with their resilience and their boldness, again, it just mm. is going to make them incredible evangelists to the world. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think actually just a memory came back in my mind, just in reference to your question to me about women. I mean, and, and it kind of also ties in with your um, sharing, Andrew, <laughs> in reference to the restroom. But for the, for the, for children to be potty trained at such a young age, like that is just <laughs> incredible. I mean, literally, I mean, just as they start walking, they're able to basically bring themselves to the to, to the bathroom on the side of the mud hut and walk back over. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. When the world is your bathroom and your toilet, it does make it a little bit easier. <laughs> <laughs> no diapers, no diapers necessary. Yeah. yeah, but you're right. I mean, there's little, little things like that that are pretty wild. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I yeah. think about... Uh, just because of how their daily life is, every South Sudanese walks everywhere. I mean, yeah. literally, they're walking yes. miles and miles and miles every day, mm-hmm. right? It's just normal. Uh, and so, you know, when there's a training opportunity or when there's a, uh, you know, whatever, a school, anything, it all involves tons of walking. Mm-hmm. So yeah. they're getting up early to walk the long distances. They're staying out late <laughs> to walk home or whatever. Um, so just that that that's taught me as well. And I remember a story, Tiana, you were on that trip in, in 2019 mm-hmm. when when uh, I drove out to a, a faraway village and um, our truck got stuck on the way back. Remember, yes. you were back at the compound. Yes, with the I rest literally of the was like, the sun's going down. Where are the guys? <laughs> yeah, so it was me, me and a couple of the guys and um, and our truck had gotten stuck and we were plugged. I mean, we, we tried digging it out. It was it was bad. It was at the end of the rainy season. So and uh, so we were like, well, I guess we better start walking. And, um, and so, you know, we had one of our South Sudanese radio staff members who was with us and he was leading the way, which is great. Um, and he's a hunter, uh, by nature. Mm. Like, so what, that's one of his jobs he's known. He makes snares for, for wild fowl and other things. And I love that. So I knew we were in good hands and it was a full moon that night. It was beautiful. Like, honestly, God filled me up with so much, um, in- encouragement in that moment. It's a memory that I look back with a lot of fondness. We ended up walking, uh, <laughs> I ended up walking 10 miles that night, um, and back to our compound, and um, I, you know, typically wear the same shoes every time when, when I go to South Sudan. These were old shoes, and honestly, before that trip, they the soles were already starting to fall apart a little bit. And the whole time I, I was walking, you know, the hours I was walking, uh, we got back in the middle of the night. I just kept on thinking of, you know, God t- talking about the Israelites in the wilderness, how all those 40 years, their shoes didn't wear out. And mm-hmm. I kept on thinking, God, you're sustaining my shoes and you're sustaining me. You're giving me the strength right now. Up to that point, I was a pretty, you know, uh, uh, you know, dormant person. I didn't do a lot of exercise. And um, and I just, I would have never told you that, that, that earlier that day that I could walk 10 miles. I just wouldn't have been able. But not only did I do it, I was filled with so much strength from the Lord. I just, it inspired me. And that's when I became a runner after that. And, you know, I've, I've, I've exercise has become a big part of my life, but I learned all that from the South Sudanese. And, um, I don't know, it was just an amazing, amazing lesson to learn. So I don't know, there's, there's, you know, so many things we can learn from them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even thinking about how they cook 
and how they clean. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. I know I, you know, having to go home and cook for my husband and, you know, sometimes I'm just tired. But I mean, in South Sudan, you got to start right when you wake up for dinner for yeah. later in this afternoon. Like, it's not like, oh, I'm just cooking for breakfast and lunch and dinner. And a lot of times, I mean, people are just eating one meal a day. Um, but yeah. 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 And there's the way that they cook on the open fire and with charcoal and in these metal pots. It's it's um, it's funny for us to that we have to kind of go back and learn a more primitive way of cooking. And I, I find that to be really cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's how we cooked in America f- for the first 200 years of our existence, pretty much. But we're way past that now. And it's it's cool to to learn an older way, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you guys agree. And you, For sure. And and just even like small things like watching the women, you know, keeping the fire going, right? Because, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it takes a lot to start a fire. Mm-hmm. They don't have like lighters there, you yes. know? Um, and so oftentimes, you know, they're taking the charcoal from the, the embers from the night before and then yeah. they're keeping that fire going for the next day. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes, you know, how are they if they need to move a fire from one location to another to, you know, to, to cook somewhere else where I mean, I've seen ladies take charcoal with their hands and just, you know, kind of move it with bare hands. It's just an amazing thing. Yeah, right. It mm-hmm. is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then, cool. I mean, you also have to protect the chickens, like the baby chicks from the hawks or you have to make sure vultures. <laughs> It was so funny when my husband went there with me. Um, he was just like, "Why are there vultures?" Like, and I was like, "Oh, this is like so normal." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is pretty crazy. You're just like, "Are we in the Jungle Book right now?" <laughs> like, <laughs> that's true. But it's like it's because you are slaughtering a cow, and <laughs> all the scraps are right there. You know, at at the kitchen hut, <laughs> which is outside. quite helpful. <laughs> yeah. But it's like 50 vultures will be there sometimes. It's yeah, wild. It is. <laughs> it is. It is the bare necessities. Yeah, it is the bare. Yeah. <laughs> Should we sing? No. <laughs> I know. I literally was like, you want to break out in tune? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. This is fun. We should definitely do it again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a great yeah. topic really for great. it, too. Yeah. We went, we went high and we went real low. So <laughs> That was my fault. Sorry. Yeah. And I'm glad we did. Yeah. yeah it was awesome. fun. Also, this is just a little preview of what day what days look like here in the office we talk about all sorts even our devotions i mean we really we really not debate each other but it's fun yeah yeah Yeah. it's really fun it's great so if anybody any of our listeners wants to come and enjoy our office anytime you're most welcome (laughs) (laughs) but all right thank you guys so much and i invite all the listeners back to our next episode as we answer the question why does so much of africa struggle to have safe water Take care. See ya.